Hey there, I am excited to talk about Blade Runner today, which is the next film we're going to be studying. Here's the deal. Blade Runner is, um, I get pretty excited about it because it is different than a lot of other science fiction. It is kind of uh, one of the more important works of science fiction film that's out there. It was made into a book by Philip K. Dick called uh, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? Uh, it's a pretty brilliant book, but it's quite different from the movie Blade Runner. And in fact, the author kind of disowned it um, and didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, and they are very different. Uh, and you should check out the the story if you want. But um, the book is basically, I'm sorry, the, the movie that we're going to watch is basically a guy named Rick Deckard is a Blade Runner who is somebody who goes and hunts down these rogue robots. And in this case, he's hunting down androids, or rather they're called replicants because they replicate human everything. Uh, they're so advanced that they don't realize that they are robots, except there's more going on uh, than was what was expected, but I don't want to ruin any of the stuff. So here's the deal. Um, Blade Runner is not for everybody. Blade Runner is, uh, uh, it came out in 1982 as kind of a, kind of a, to ride the boom of science fiction. You have like Star Wars coming out in 1979 and then like the next Basically, every year since then, people have been trying to match that phenomenon and, uh, you know, match the hype of Star Wars and science fiction and that kind of thing. Blade Runner is one of those where, I mean, they literally went out and got Han Solo. They got Harrison Ford to be in it. And he's great. Um, the whole cast is great. Um, they got Ridley Scott, who would go on to make uh, the Aliens uh, movies and The Martian and other ones. Uh, but as a kind of a younger director with uh, some of these younger up and coming um you know, actors and performers, people thought, uh, or the filmmakers thought, this is going to just like ride the wave and this is going to be like the next Star Wars. And so they uh, they made the movie, they put it out and uh, test audiences hated this movie. They hate, hate, hated this movie. Uh, and, um, you know, for, for good reason, but also I think uh, it's, it's a bit ahead of its time, which is also sometimes a way of saying, like making excuse for a movie that maybe wasn't good. Uh, I, I'd imagine that the movie in its first cut was good, but here's what happens. Um, Ridley Scott made the movie, cut it the way he wanted it. Uh, the, the people who owned the studio said, yeah, you can't make it this way. You need to do these three things to it and change it. And he said, well, I'm not going to do that. And they said, well, we're just going to fire you and we're going to do it without you. Uh, and we don't care what happens because we've already invested this much money in the, the film. Uh, and so he uh, agreed <laughs> to come back and say, all right, if somebody's going to have to like kill my film, it's going to be me. So he went back in and what they did is they changed the ending. Um, they took out some of the uh, scenes that were deemed to be too violent and they added a voiceover to it uh, to ba basically explain what was going on. And there are rumors that Harrison Ford uh, went through and kind of narrated it like he was uh, you know, reading like a funeral march or something so that they would never ever use it. And he's denied that he did that. But you know, when you go back and listen to it, it's probably not his best work. Then again, I'm not one to, uh, I'm not gonna question Harrison Ford uh, as far as that goes. So what they did is uh, they released this movie, they put it out and it did okay. It was definitely not Star Wars and it definitely had, you know, people got it. But you know, if you build it as being the next Star Wars and then it's this really dark, brooding, uh, almost nightmarish type of movie, then people are going to be disappointed. And they were. Uh, but what happened is it kind of got a cult following. And then the story kind of got out about what the story could have been and how it was different. So um, what happens next is a little bit absurd. And seven different versions of the movie get created. All right. So you've got the th theatrical version. And then what happens is like there's an international version with um, some of these scenes that have been taken out, put back in. You had um, some other scenes put uh, in that were not in the uh, original theatrical one. And the ending has changed so that you don't get the, um, well, we'll talk about the ending when the movie's done. And I'll show you the original ending and we'll talk about that. Um, and then, so people like learn about this and be, it takes on kind of cult status. And it's one of the first DVDs uh, released ever uh, when DVD players become a thing around 1997. Uh, it's not terribly high quality, but it was like mind blowing to people at the time when they're going from uh, watching things on their VHS tapes. And then of course you had your jump to the next thing, which was laser discs. And I just happened to have laser discs and these didn't catch on for lots of reasons. One, you had like three of these giant things that you can see scale from my head. You had like three to 10 of these 
with double sides on them and you had to flip them like every 25 minutes to be able to watch them. But the, the visuals of them were pretty amazing and there was nothing like it at the time, even if you owned like a projector or an original print. So um, that being said, uh, this is uh, not worth anything. You would think it would be worth all kinds of stuff, but it's really, they're not worth anything because nobody has a disc player, but it does look really cool to put on my shelf, which is why I have it. Wish I had a Blade Runner one. Anyways, what people did with Blade Runner is like, people had kind of traded messages. This is way pre-internet, but uh, they had kind of recreated the cut of the movie that Ridley Scott wanted to make, uh, just like people did with this one, which if I could get this to work, you could see that Han shoots Greedo before uh, the other way around. And this is the original movie that they don't want you to see anymore and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, um, so they, they make a, a couple versions. And what happens is Ridley Scott kind of gets enough clout to come back and um, work on his movie again. And he goes back in and he changes it to the way that he wanted it to be. Um, edits it, re-releases it into something called the final cut. I didn't explain the whole like other five versions that happened before that because that's like you can read about that if you're really into it. And if we were in class, maybe I'd talk about it, but I'm trying to keep this moving here. So um, what happened is uh, this final cut comes out. People see it the way that it's supposed to be. And of course, now this is like 2007. So it's, you know, way later. It's like 20, 25 years since the movie came out. It's, uh, you know, got this cult status. It's cemented itself as being an important work of art, an important work of science fiction. Um, you know, the things about it that are great about it include the visuals. Like one thing about science fiction that people love is the, uh, the world building that goes on, like <clears throat> fantasy as well. Uh, Lord of the Rings, the world building that goes on there, the world building that happens in Star Wars, in Star Trek, or, you know, uh, The Matrix, uh, even Terminator. But so many science fiction movies uh, kind of create this like world out of like something we haven't seen before. And Blade Runner is basically the story of like Earth after we have had like this World War Terminus where, um, you know, we, we've scorched the sky. The people who are left on, on Earth are kind of the dregs of society and like if you're living there you're sort of um, like a degenerate or you're like you really you're unhealthy you've got something that uh the the government doesn't want you to take to other planets because we've gone ahead and we've colonized other planets and we've used this slave labor these replicants these uh robots to be able to do that um and in doing that, like we created uh, better and better versions of them to the point where we even created some that are so lifelike that humans can't tell their robots and the robots can't tell their robots. And in doing that and creating them so powerfully, um, some of them realize what they are and rebel, which is kind of what the story of this is about. Um, but at the same time, it, uh, the people left on Earth, like they realize they have no purpose. They have no, uh, no reason to live. They have no, um, you know, and there's no animals left. It's kind of like uh, Interstellar, where you know, or Wally, where there's just trash on trash, and everything's just kind of dark and rainy and grimy. And they realize, like, if they can't leave Earth, they've got no longevity. They've got no uh, lineage. There, there's no point in having kids or anything because they're just going to die on Earth while humanity is going to go on somewhere else. Meanwhile, these robots uh, have come back to Earth because they want to talk with their uh, their creator and they want more life. But we'll get to that uh, as we get into the movie and we'll talk about that more after the movie is done uh, as well. So long story short, uh, multiple different versions of this movie. The movie version we're going to watch is the final cut, which does not have any voiceover and it does have the additional scenes which were deemed to be a little bit too much and it is uh it is a little too much in some places and i may pop in or with a little thing and say like hey this is maybe not a part everybody wants to watch but uh you know uh, i did send a disclaimer home to parents and whatever and i'm sure uh people have seen things that are uh rough in different places anyway so um what i want you to get out of this i want you to be um thinking about you know who in this movie is a robot and how can you prove it because everybody in this movie is fair game for being a robot, okay? Main character included, some of them you know to be robots, some of them don't act like it. Um, sometimes you can tell who the robots are because they're kind of childish. Uh, and, and when I first saw this movie, I just thought it was bad acting, but I think it's it's intentional the way that like a character like Roy Batty, sometimes when something happens to one of his robot friends, he kind of gets kind of schmoopy and like sad and like he's trembly and he doesn't know how to react or he makes like, awkward jokes or sometimes he's just you know overly uh like romantic or something not romantic but like 
uh, uh, amorous or sexual or not exactly sexual, but like just they, they act like babies because they really are only like three or four years old, even though they have the abilities and bodies and strength of like grown adults, but they are just learning and they're really only aware of what they are for like a year. So think of it this way. Think about the last time you had a birthday party or let's say like your 10 year old birthday party. What did you do? Um, what if you found out that that didn't really happen? What if you found out that you are in fact a robot and everything you've ever done up until this point has been programmed and you were born yesterday? Like, would you know that? Or like if you were born three, four years ago and you're coming to the end of your life cycle, would you know? Would you be able to prove it? I mean, it would, the fix would have to be in and everybody around you would have to be in on it. But what if everybody's robots? What if everybody's programmed with these memories like you can't go back in time and like relive that so and memory is a funny thing and like if you've had any injuries or anything how do you know what's real how do you know what's not so um everybody in this movie is fair game to be a robot uh it, they will lay out who is and who isn't but i am going to ask you some questions like you know whose story is this is it rick deckard's or is it roy batty's uh is rick deckard a robot or a human and how can you prove it uh and then some other things um you know will come up uh, so I'm going to have like four things I want you to respond to about it. I'm going to make uh, Blade Runner 2049, which came out uh, two years ago, available to you if you want to try to qualify for fours. Um, you could watch that movie in addition. It happens like 30 years later, both literally and in the uh, movie verse. Uh, it happens 30 years later. You could watch that and um, add to it. I will add, add a bonus question if anybody wants to try to get fours. Uh, it's worth your time. It's obviously a newer movie and it looks better and it's, you know, got all kinds of, you know, technical stuff about it. I mean, it's a pretty beautiful movie to look at uh, compared to the older one, but you know what? The older one does hold up pretty well. It is, uh, as I was saying about this world building, like it's kind of gorgeous in it's Neo um, 2019 uh, Los Angeles of what they thought the world was going to be like from 1982. So um, take a look at Blade Runner and uh, answer the questions. And then uh, I look forward to seeing what you think of it. And then uh, I'm going to do, do about a movie a week. So this is this week's movie. All right.